Planetary, issue number six. Learning curve steep on this one, so keep focused. The word is rockets. 1945, war ends. Warner von Braun and his men of the middle work, the rocket builders, are gotten to the States soon after. Their signature brand of German engineering will be the engine behind the Apollo program and will inform American thought about space travel until the 90s. Also gotten out by Americans, the engineers and analysts Hitler secretly kept close to him in Berlin. No one knew their names or even what they were doing. They were at the highest level of Nazi security. These were the people who were going to put Germans on the moon by 1955 and aim space arcs at Mars by 1968. A deal was cut. These people were geniuses. They outshone von Braun the way the sun does a kid's flashlight. And by the end of 45, they were in the States working on space travel. Relax a little, Elijah. Like hell. Not until I throttled someone to death or broken something really big. It took JFK and a hideous amount of public money for Apollo to produce the Saturn V booster, the only engine capable of slinging a man-rated spacecraft into an interplanetary insertion. The secret team, working under the call sign Artemis, had a comparable design working in 1959, and they sent men to the moon in 1961. One group never knew about the other, you understand. It was understood at the highest levels of American government, which is about 33 levels above the president, that Apollo and Artemis served very different purposes. Apollo was the show. It was Cold War glamour. Our brave boys working to best the evil empire and its sinister chief designer. The one who effortlessly hurled these Sputniks and Gargarins into space. Artemis was the work. It was Cold War direct. Striking the victories that only their boss and our boss would ever know about. Smile, Elijah. Drums. Okay, I'm smiling like this is a fun phone call, but I swear to you, you screw this up, and I'll stamp on you until you're faxable. I'm with you, Jaquita, and I'm shutting down the in-elevator security cameras... now. Okay, take the locks off the elevator. Get us into the penthouse levels. That's what we came for. The word is bastards. That's right, and we're coming to get them. By the time Apollo had put its men on the moon, Artemis intended to have become Ares and gotten a working base on Mars. Artemis was the real glory, the real front line of the Cold War. The crew trained up for it were treated like warrior kings. Because that's what made heroes back then. Arrogance and righteousness in the individual American way versus the commie hive mind. Artemis Lunar launched on June 6, 1961 with a crew of four, but it never made it to the moon. The crew... Randall Dowling, physicist, engineer, you name it. List of the disciplines as long as your arm. Project leader, flight commander. We're in. Please tell me what the hell they are. Jacob Green, pilot. William Leather, flight engineer. Kim Suskind, physicist. These were all Twilight people. Green flew missions no one knew about in World War II. They might have let Dowling be the American Einstein if not for his background. Leather, the younger man, has some hazy history hinting at involvement in exotic airplane design. And there was a woman in Florida that who swore to her dying day that she and Leather were the last people to ride in the Nautilus in 1959. Suskind was the daughter of one of the Nazi brain trust. There was something in translunar space waiting for them. Artemis L. had an array of color cameras with automatic film changers running throughout the flight. We have copies of the films. Artemis L. is a control. All systems nominal. Go for thermal control roll. Commit registered. Go for thermal control roll, Artemis L. Randall, uh, this is Science Station 2 at control. Can you run me a check on exterior scientific package B? That's Hall Prow, yes? Uh, running diagnostic. It's not the detection package, it's the reading control. We're getting an anomalous reading, and... Artemis L from Control, we lost the tail end of that last transmission. Please repeat. Please. Like whatever it was happened to Island Zero, we know what the translunar event wasn't. The major superhuman players we know of weren't involved. There was no extraterrestrial activity in cislunar space throughout 1961 by any of the known Xeno species. But we don't know what it was.
Artemis L returned to Earth five days after this encounter. Seems like it whipped around the moon and back again, much like the Apollo 13 rescue trajectory. And the four were no longer completely human. News of this reached Artemis' counterparts in Russia. Of course, it bypassed the chief designer. Sergei Korolev, the chief designer, was stuck in Baikonur, still figuring out how to lash 60 of his boosters together to achieve translunar injection. But Baikonur was not Russia's only launch site. On November 22, 1963, they sent a crew to the moon on the exact same trajectory as Artemis. And that craft never returned. Vanished. So did the first four. By 1964, they officially didn't exist, because by then they were running Artemis. They'd taken over the entire operation and were using the Black Ops cash flow that fed Artemis for their own agenda. Elijah, I'm going to let you look at the files and make your own judgment. But these people are the dark side of everything we do. They're so deep undercover that drawing a bead on them is like trying to beat up fog. But we have resources most people lack. These people need putting down. And you're getting this briefing now for three reasons. You're a cranky son of a bitch and no one really likes you, but we trust you now. You're always complaining that we do nothing proactive, and we just found out where the four are. You want to go get them? Elijah. Jakita. What do you think of the files? How did we manage to track them? Remember the guards on Island Zero? Sure. American flag. Japanese flag. Few weird insignia. Appeared from nowhere. They were from what Artemis became. So the files you raided from their base after the nerve gas killed them out on the ice led us to what we needed to draw a bead on the four. Also gave us new insight into Island Zero, but that's something else. Even if a tenth of this thing is true, the things these scum have cost us since 1961, I don't enjoy killing people. I want to kill these people. Just you and me, Mr. Snow. Who are you and how do you know my name? So it's true. <laughs> well, I can do away with this damned beard, since we've been so completely compromised here. I mean, I'm not going to convince you I'm not me when you've found me in the middle of Randall's lab, am I? My name's William Leather, Mr. Snow. You'll have noted that your attempt to freeze the water in my brain isn't quite working. Keep trying, though, and Miss Wagner will just be a bit sore when she picks herself up out of Four Voyagers Plaza. It takes a lot more than a fall like that to seriously hurt her. Ask her about Broken Earth A in 1997. I only know the barest part of what you do. I know that you've done more than your share of making the world mediocre. The things we've seen here alone, if I understand them right, then they alone could save millions of lives a year. Why? We're adventurers, my crewmates and I, on the human adventure, and you can't all come along. <laughs> Look at what you've got here, you bastard. These things... In the last few months, I've seen a computer built in 1944 that could map the multiverse and something that stored ghosts as information. And I've walked the decks of a ship designed to sail between realities. And these are lost things that could be salvaged or retrieved. And now I see these wonders, you utter scumbag, shiny new and hidden away in a place paid for by God knows what atrocity. Kick in the unmentionables. You've changed, Mr. Snow. You don't know me. Oh, yes, I do. I've known you for far too long. And we're leaving you alive because this new train of events amuses us. Remember what we four are. We were reborn in the exploding heart of the multiverse. We are optimal humans. We are explorers, scientists, guards, the secret heroes of a world that doesn't deserve us. I don't know you. Oh, God. Oh, God, I can't see you anymore. We were given the world in 1961. We know all the things that you've struggled to uncover for decades. We are all those things. We are the secret history of the planet, for we are its secret chiefs. 
Time for you to ask yourself some hard questions, Mr. Snow. We'll overlook this compromising of our New York lab. There are others. But do you really want to invite doom for yourself and others by continuing to investigate us? Do you really not remember us? Who benefits from your lack of memory? Who knows the secret history of Elijah Snow? What are your teammates not telling you?'